Hello everybody, my name is Bernard and today I will show you some of the cool new features of the Bode Analyzer Suite 3. The first thing you will see when you start the new Bode Analyzer Suite is that we have now predefined measurement modes. So in the Vector Network Analysis tab you can choose between the Transmission Reflection mode which allows you to perform S-parameter measurements, for example S21 and S11, or the Gain Phase mode where you can use an external reference to measure the gain and phase of a circuit. We use this measurement, for example, for the stability analysis of power supplies. Another mode is the reflection with external coupler measurement, where we use an external directional coupler to measure uh, the S11 or the reflection of a device in the test. In the impedance analysis tab, you will find seven different methods to measure the impedance of a connected device in the test. Starting with the very simple one-port measurement method, which is good for 500 milliohms to about 10 kiloohms. We have the impedance adapter measurement method, which gives you an extended impedance measurement range using our impedance adapters for wired or surface mount components. The shunt through measurement allows you to measure really, really low impedances down to 1 milliohm. The series through measurement allows you to measure very high impedances up to a megaohm. The voltage current method allows you to use external voltage and current probes to get the impedance measurement done by simply dividing the voltage picked up at channel 2 by the current picked up on channel 1. And finally, with an external bridge, you can measure any impedance you want because the impedance measurement range is defined by the external bridge that you have built. If you perform a specific measurement with the Bode 100 quite frequently, it might be good for you that the Bode 100 always starts in the same measurement mode. To achieve this, you can define a default startup measurement. So for example, we can switch to vector network analysis and we say our default startup should be gain phase. So I set this as a default startup. Alternatively, if I have a predefined file that already includes some basic measurements or reference measurements, I can use a custom file and select the file here that then will be used when the Bode 100 starts. But let's have a look if I have chosen gain phase right now. I go to back and now I will close the Bode Analyze Suite, restart it again and now it comes up exactly set up as I want it. So let's do some real measurements. I have connected the quartz filter that comes with the Bode 100 to the Bode 100 and we will now perform a simple S-parameter measurement to determine the resonant frequencies of the quartz filter. To do so, I start the transmission reflection measurement. After the measurement has been started, I start the sweep, pressing the continuous sweep button and I already can see the series and parallel resonance frequencies somewhere around 12 MHz. To zoom in, I just keep the left mouse button pressed and move the mouse from top left to bottom right. And I have zoomed in. I can repeat this as often as I want. If I want to zoom out, I simply do it the opposite way. I keep the left mouse button pressed and move the mouse from bottom right to top left. I have zoomed out again. However, as you can see, if I zoom in, I'm not having the resolution that I want because the zoom, the sweep, is still from 100 kHz to 40 MHz. But I have the get from zoom button and if I click it, then the start and stop frequencies will be changed and I have all the points of the measurement between the frequencies that I see right now. So let's do that. Get from zoom and as you can see, I have now a sweep that is only from 11 MHz to 12.9 MHz. I can right click, optimize, and now I see, hey, I have both curves in one, uh, in one picture, in one diagram. I can change the view by clicking view and I say I want to have one axis per chart. And possibly I can also say that I want to rearrange them vertically. I can further zoom in and zoom in. And now I can press optimize and if I want I can also move the zoom area. If I think that I have chosen the right area, I simply press the get from zoom button again, press optimize and I see all the curves. Now I can set the cursor to the maximum and minimum by right clicking and saying cursor 1, jump to max 
cursor 2, jump to min, and I have my two frequencies. The zooming functions are a lot easier to use now, but what I really like are the new memory functions. I will demonstrate them by adding different loads to my quartz filter. Let's see what happens. So I will first store the original curve by pressing measurement to new memory and the new memory appears in both diagrams. I can say that this memory is called 50 ohms load because I'm using the internal termination of the Bode 100. Now I will add 25 ohms and we can see that the curve changes. I say measurement to new memory, I got my new memory, I put in 25 ohms, which is not totally correct because it's in parallel to the 50 ohms, but who cares. Press OK. And I will do a third memory by adding a 10 ohm resistor. And again I press measurement to new memory. And it's done. The cool thing is that so far I only see the measurement result for the current trace but I can link my memories and immediately I see that all the memories are available on the uh, cursor grid and I can compare for example the current measurement with the measurement with 50 ohms or 25 ohms. I have just seen that I haven't called the memory 3, I've given a different name to memory 3, so let's add this. This is 10 ohms now. And you can see the name also changes in the cursor grid and I get all the readings at the same time. So let's analyze the impedance at the series resonant frequency. To do so, I simply pick the frequency in the cursor grid, right click, go to copy, then I switch to fixed frequency, I enter the frequency with paste, I confirm with enter, and I start the measurement. I can click Optimize and now I get a lot of information on the impedance at the series resonance frequency including the ser series equivalent circuit, the parallel equivalent circuit, including the Q factor and tangent delta. So that was quick and easy. Another new function that I want to show you is the export function. So if we have done our measurement we can click the export button and now we can choose between a CSV export, an Excel export, a PDF report or a touchstone export if you want to use the results in simulation. I have chosen the Excel export and I can decide further on if I want to start Excel after saving the file, I can decide if I want to include the memory traces and so on. As soon as I have made my settings I simply click save as, save the file, Excel opens and I get all the results and I can continue with some calculations. The new Bode Analyzer Suite offers you a lot of other functions. It increases your upper frequency limit to 50 MHz no matter when you have bought your Bode 100. It offers you a great automation interface and allows you to control more than one Bode 100 from a PC. In fact, you can connect up to 10 Bode 100s to your PC if your PC hardware is able to manage that. This is especially handy if you are working with automated measurements, for example, in a manufacturing environment. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to contact us. And don't forget, download the Bode Analyzer Suite 3 from our webpage omicron-lab.com. Have a great day.